This is Hampton's Place. It's had many names before, but it's always been Hampton's Place. When a rush thought dinner's gone horribly wrong and a plan needs pulling together, but a restaurant's too pricey and Chinese too much or curry too spicy, don't fancy it as such, there's a deep frying mash tent at the bottom of four chimneys, my last refuge between hunger and bedtime, where tea time orderlies in culinary scrubs triage and treat the evening's casualties, and like a field hospital, it might suit my health better if my visits weren't so commonplace. But when the chips are down and my nerves are fried and I'm feeling battered and my soul has died, I'll rely on this place in Hampton. This is Hampton's place. A shop where talking's free. Costs only the burns on the boss's hands as he's holding onto Gladys's tea, and she tells a tale of her nephews and Brexit and the surgery on her knee. And it's a small price to pay to know this week she'll have had some company. This is Hampton's place, which on a Friday night becomes the local's local. A fish-frying barman pours pints of batter and serves them with a story of how his granddad was a poet. Somewhere his story sits in the city's central library, bolstering the well-thumbed thesis on how the city's growth is purely thanks to business, somehow forgetting the people who've lived here. This might be Hampton's place, but everyone seems well. Like the man from Fullbridge, five chip shops away, who makes his weekly pilgrimage because he knows the best chips, best chat, best food, best scraps, best burgers, kebabs and tinfoil pies, best experimental specials and halloumi fries, are in this place called Hampton. And in this place, where stories are shared, and jokes and viewpoints and anecdotes aired, there's more than fish and chips being prepared more than bellies being fed. This place belongs to Hampton. No tables are reserved, and no chips are on the menu. See people being served.